Welcome to Secrets for an Inspirational Life with Mimi Novik, the place where every heart tells its story. Whether it's inspiration, courage or hope you need, you've come to the right place. Sit back and enjoy the journey with us. Subscribe below to be sure you don't miss future episodes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Secrets for an Inspirational Life. How are you all today? I hope that you are well. I hope that there are some beautiful things happening in your life. And I hope that there is love taking you by the hand, moment to moment. And I know that's one of the things, you know, the eternal things of life is this magic of love. It's something that we are all part of, this divine love, and it's something that we all search for. And we forget that actually that love, that pureness of love, is who we are. And I think for myself, I believe that our journey here on this earth is to discover that, to discover that beautiful love that we are, to share it with each other, and to reach a kind of sublime love where it encompasses everything that we do. It touches everyone that we meet, and ultimately, we all become part of that beautiful circle of divinity. Now, I am absolutely delighted to welcome my guest today, who is actually back by popular demand, and that is the very interesting Kevin Silas. Kevin is a martial arts sensei and a complementary health expert with over 35 years of experience. He has traveled the world teaching his unique techniques that encompass yoga, meditation, breath work, and rebalancing, amongst other things. He holds an impressive sixth dan in kickboxing and second dan in jiu-jitsu. But Kevin's journey has not always been easy. Through his own life challenges, he has discovered a calling to help others find their true path. His passionate pursuit and exploration of the mystical aspects of life have empowered him to now help others find their calling in their own lives. His initial background was in dance and semi-professional football, but he transitioned to training to Iyengar Yoga with renowned practitioners like Ruth White and Shandor Ramete after his profound life experience in led him to this path. Kevin's quest for knowledge led him to also spend a year in Australia working for Greenpeace and then further travels through the USA, Nepal, Thailand and Southeast Asia. Along his travels, he met with the mystical Sufis who taught him the art of living in the present moment while embracing divine love. During his studies to become an Ansura Immersions teacher, he had a life-changing encounter with the esteemed Buddhist monk, Akbe Toku Rinpoche. This meeting sparked a deep spiritual friendship that would forever shape his life and actually his path. Currently, Kevin is working on a book about his life, due to be published at the end of the year. Today, he shares his incredible journey. Welcome, dear Kevin. Welcome. How are you? How are you? I'm fine, fine. And how are you today? I am very good. Very good, thank you. Good, good, good. It's yes. all rather fancy, I have to say. Um, and I am so glad. Thank you so much for coming back. So many people wanted you back that we, I have to say for everybody out there, it was so difficult to get Kevin back with all the things that he's doing. But finally, ta-da, you are here. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And 
There are so many things that people wanted me to ask you. But before we do all of that, just a little reminder for people out there who have heard um, about you before and for those who haven't, Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about where this journey of yours began, Kevin. Great. Well, um, thank you for having me again. It's lovely to hear hear your voice. Very welcome, Um, likewise. Where, where where the beginning was is pretty much like um difficult to say really it was almost like there was no beginning it was just um a slow um a slow awakening um and like minor revelations all the way through from as far back as i can remember um and we touched on this in the last talk uh, due mm. to the um the, my upbringing and the challenges that that um, imposed on on myself and my my siblings, um, life was um, was like the, the front the front the cold face of life was um, shown to us as children for many different reasons, and um, so in that way, you found yourself having to ask yourself questions that perhaps maybe under what I call relatively normal circumstances, you wouldn't ask yourself as a, as a, as a young person. Um, so although it was a challenge and it left its indelible mark in terms of um, the effects, it's also a gift. And, but that takes time. Over time, with experience, and as you grow um, knowledge and um, awareness and appreciation and also being able to draw yourself away from the actual being in the experience as to taking a perspective from it from a different vantage you know different viewpoint you can then see it from many different perspectives so whether that's um clear enough kind of like indication as to why i set off on these paths it was almost like i had no choice this was the way it was going to be I had to go looking and searching and inquiring um, as to as to make sense of just what happened. You know, there was so much, like I said, chaos and upset and uh, dysfunction. I just wanted to know: was there was there a way of seeing all of that uh, in a different way? And um, and, and I'm, you know, I, I did find it and um i have found it i continue to work there's there, there's no such thing as um an end product with regards this journey for any of us it's an ongoing ever uh renewing experience but nevertheless it's um it's definitely worth taking up that's all i can say if you're looking for um a way to tap into uh, qualities in yourself such as contentment and love and compassion and um, yeah, unity. You have to do it, but no, you don't have to do it. But um, it just enriches your life if you do. So that to me was a spiritual journey. If you know, that's the beginning of the spiritual journey. It wasn't uh, just deciding to become a yoga teacher and doing a yoga course or, or studying Sufism or Celtic mysticism or any of that, which I have done. Um, wasn't any of that it was uh it was more than that and um so i studied yoga for yoga's sake not not to become a teacher i was looking for ways to to be honest to heal what i had which was um a bit of a fractured heart um so that that was that that was that that was the first those were the first reasons why I, i i started to take up that that journey and that inquiry take on the inquirers looking into the nature of life its mysteries and um trying to see if i could fuse it all together you know um so yeah does that answer your question (laughs) well i was sitting here listening to that and it was so deep and it encompasses so many things. And in fact, it sounds very mystical because I know that your path is one of mysticism. But 
before we go into that, mm-hmm. you know, it was very relaxing, even though I know it, uh, there are many broken things mm-hmm. that happened in your life and things that you've spoken about before, but, and not to put it mildly in any way, but is there something, because people always somehow feel connected to people when people share aspects of a story. It's like, for example, I don't know, um, a spider bit somebody, oh yes, I have a story about that. And it's about somehow familiarity. Yeah. So what can you share before we go into the greater depths of Mm -hmm. your spiritual path and your work now? What is it that you're able to share about what happened to you before that um, helped you in a way, propelled you to sort of yes. to put it in a better way, take the road, you know, as the famous book um, says, the road less traveled, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, without personalizing it, without, I hope it comes across as um, and very clearly to people that, from this vantage point, much later on in my life, I've tried to depersonalize the experience as much as I can, and yet at the same time, uh, stay close enough to it so it's still a visceral experience sometimes, it still shakes your body sometimes, it's still, like I said, it, mm, uh, can bring, bring in a kind of, um, a kind of, a reflective melancholy. I'm okay with that because that's also this is also all in the mix of awakening in to what we truly are. I'm okay with that. It's the shadow side. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I want people to understand. I'd like people to understand if they've gone through really traumatic childhood stuff. There is always a way through it, and it's um, it may be long, hard, and challenging, and you may have to make yourself. You know, completely vulnerable at times. Uh, you may have to step into your own tenderness, which is really difficult. You may have to relearn or completely learn uh, what what the terms like care means for yourself uh, and kindness and um, and again compassion, because these are things that you're not um, when you're a child and you're going through um, that kind of trauma, which is the basic trauma was that no mother or father when they were around, they really, really struggled with addictions and alcohol on a huge scale. And unfortunately for us, for the children, for us children, like I said, myself and my siblings, my mother reacted to alcohol in a very violent, dramatic way. So there was no peace hardly. There was just um, confrontation. There was fear. There was a complete letdown. Um, there was despondency from my mother and, or, or, or again, myself and my, my siblings, um, and um, and and insecurity. And so I, I was I, I was considering this, and I was thinking, the brain of a child that's brought up with the fear of uh, threat all the time, pretty much, um, develops differently. We know that. We know that now. Um, the neuroplasticity and the research that's that's happening there um, to a child's brain that is brought up in a steady, regular home. Um, nothing's perfect. No one has the perfect upbringing. No one has the perfect life. Perhaps we're not meant to. And I'm not looking for the perfect life. I never started looking for the on these paths. I never thought I was going to get something. I'm going to get to a place of perfection where I don't feel anything, where where I'm divorcing everything, where I'm above everything. That's not my path, but nevertheless, it was um, it was yes, very um, very challenging in that way. It was it was very difficult to see your own mother lost and bereft and carrying out behaviours that you just never saw. And especially, I'm talking about way back in the early seventies, through the seventies and early eighties, it just wasn't seen. It just wasn't that kind of behavior. Um, so, again, that's that's roughly it. Um, unpredictability, fear, and um, and you you can't settle with that. And so, 
when it began to manifest early 80s, I took myself to college and I started experiencing what then was and is now, but like panic attacks. And now everybody talks about them. Everybody talks about anxiety, PTSD. Everybody's familiar. It's great. It's fantastic. It's everywhere. There's help everywhere. But back in those days, no one even mentioned the word anxiety. So for me, experiencing anxiety and anxiety is coming out of the blue. Didn't understand the symptoms. I didn't understand what was going on in my mind. I was feeling completely lost. You know, I could be in any setting whatsoever. It would just come on. And that's, 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 that's a challenge. Um, you, you really, really have to hold your ground with that. Otherwise you become very lost and very uh, disorientated and don't really get back from it. So, so I really, yes. Yeah, so. Thank you for sharing that because that's not an easy thing to share. Mm. And I think that I have never met anybody in my life who has had an easy past, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And the ones who have had it the most difficult are actually some of the most considerate, compassionate, and spiritual people. Because mm -hmm. I think we go through these things as children, some more difficult than others. Um, and there is a greater reason for this. I, I absolutely believe it. And you're absolutely right, Kevin, because you can't compare two people that have led a traumatic life and one that hasn't led a traumatic life. Because no. if you've been in a state of trauma and survival, yeah. firstly, as a child, somehow the makeup of you um, in this world becomes the one of a survivor. It does, yeah. yeah. And there's no way that you can shift from that, I don't think. I, I, and some looking at it on a more deeper level, I think the survivors, the warriors, in fact, are the ones that were meant to be that even before, I'm going to put it completely out there now, that happened before we came onto this earth, I always believe in destiny and I believe that there is a greater reason that every single one of us is here on the planet. So everything that you've gone through takes a remarkable act of courage then. I'm still astounded um, knowing you um, and how fantastic you've made your life and what do you do for people now. But how I want to ask you, and for people out there who may be experiencing this, how do you take yourself from the anxiety, which is often crippling for yeah. people who have experienced it? Yeah. Um, it actually overtakes your life. You can't yes. live your life. No, you, you can't. can't. You, you can't. Uh, you, it, there's no such thing as living your life. You're existing. You and you're waiting for the next panic attack to happen. Yes. Um, and then you have to get over it and you have to start again. So going through all of that, actually going to college, even though you have been through so many traumatic events with you and your siblings and your life, mm -hmm. and the details are not important um, yeah. Yeah. because I think that's something that um, I'm sure maybe in your forthcoming book, um, people can read about. Um, but what's important is that you survived. But how do you survive? How do you, how did you make that um, choice to say, I'm going to survive? I'm actually going to go to college. I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to work through all of this. How did you do that? How does one do that? I think, I think, okay, so now now comes in, it's a very good question, and I think it was because it was so extreme and what, what, what I witnessed um, as a child, things were so extreme that in a way they served a purpose because of that extremity. Um, and, and again, what I witnessed, I, again, I had no choice but to look at different ways of removing, was there, is there, will there be 
because I asked myself when I was very young, will there be a way out of this? Is there a way out of this? And that was like, that came to me at like eight or nine. I saw so much upset and despair. And um, I, it, I, it, look, like you said, I, I just didn't have a choice. Now, at the same time, I know this may sound, again, um, odd to people. And it had nothing to do with mm, any uh, notion or me I'm trying to understand what God was. I was eight or nine or ten, but it doesn't really, it, it didn't really matter to me. It was like what I was shown was so, again, dark and extreme uh, and different spheres of existing, just existing through despair and uh, poverty and seeming like uh, the soul was gone in people. And that was I witnessed that in my own mother. And um, for me, it was not because I went to church, not because I picked up a particular holy book, none of that. It was more uh, pressing than that. I felt uh, through it all, I had this feeling that no matter what was coming, no matter what I had to confront, it was ineffable. But there was an energy, uh, a power, a presence, even though there's a lot of darkness around, there was also a bigger, more poignant, more powerful presence, the best way I can put it. And that always stayed with me. It's always been there my whole life. So I wasn't, again, it wasn't like, um, I must find a faith. I, you know, if I believe, I wasn't, yes, I was desperate and I was having panic attacks. And yeah, I'll admit this, you know, to people, we've got to start from where we are. Um, uh, yeah, your heart's broken. And at a young age, that's a tough thing to deal with, and you never repair it fully. But that's 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 just the way it goes. But yeah, so moving on from that and into uh, challenging yourself to, like I said, to look for ways of moving yourself away from all of this. There has to be something else. There has to be a way, another way, other ways of existing that are more fulfilling, that are more promising, that are more enriching um and and because otherwise if you don't do that you may replicate the behaviors of your peers your mother and your father in particular you may then go down their uh, their route into addiction and what i saw was just darkness and oblivion and um that wasn't an option i wasn't going to do that and i'm not I, you know I, I can honestly say this it was 10 years old i came home i saw absolute carnage you know and um i witnessed it and um it was that moment i was like i'm not doing this and it's not a religious thing it's not an ethical thing it's not a moral thing i've never touched alcohol in my life no drugs um nothing i was going to go cold turkey i wanted to go on a path and each individual is entitled to do whatever do your own thing you know there were many many spiritual paths to back to the beloved all well and good mine was at that age 10 i wasn't going to go near that stuff i had seen absolute like i said um uh, um soulless living and i didn't want it and so so that's like, so a very good question you ask that was my impetus and it's always stayed with me whenever i felt vulnerable whenever i felt lost i felt confused when my life got stuck when the anxiety was so uh, vivid and apparent, apparent and it stopped me from doing and living, I always went back to that place. I'm not drinking. I'm not taking drugs. I'm not going down that route. That's not my calling. It's not for me. It's in my DNA. It's in my people. It's in the past. I'm of Irish origin and um, as beautiful and as strong and as brave as the Irish are. You know, every race has its own um, karma to deal with. And, um, and and that's the negative side of it. And uh, um, rather, I wanted to do and study Celtic mysticism. I wanted to study the optimism of being Irish and what that really meant. And uh, so that's what I did. Um, I'm not having it. I just not compromising. I just didn't want to compromise with all of that. And I never have done. Um, so, so that again, takes an, an absolute remarkable amount of soul strength this isn't we're not just talking about a physical strength there must have been something kevin 
far greater, far, I don't know, higher in the spiritual there's, world. There's a fire, and you know, you are correct. There's a fire, and um, you know what? The most I I felt a complete very recently. I felt a complete, um, not complete, but I had I had like this moment where something else dropped off deep inside me, and that was because I had a meeting with um, an absolute beautiful human being. Uh, a Sufi and we talked and talked and talked for five hours and we talked all things Sufism and all things to me Sufism means life to me it embellishes life it brings color it brings a richness it brings depth um, it brings again beauty divine beauty it's so incredible and conversation five hours of it was um, it's okay it's okay to um these things, it's okay to let your heart break because that's where we need to be. Keep letting your heart break. It's like, wow, can I? I, I can let my heart break? You know, most of us try and hold it together, even on the spiritual paths. We're still mm -hmm. holding it together. As long as I do A, B, C, D and carry out these routines, even on the yoga mat, it's like I hold it together. No. It's, no, 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 no. This, this, this realm, in the Sufi realm, it's okay. It's the journey of tears. It's not self-pity in tears. It's the journey of opening up and making yourself vulnerable, placing your head down and opening your heart. There's nothing more healing. There's nothing more exquisite than that. Honestly, from my, from my heart, I mean that. If people that have suffered or any human being on this planet could just orientate themselves just for one moment a day to consider that, just take yourself to a quiet place, move into the silence and listen to the the language behind the silence and understand your in-betweenness. I do, I, I, it's contentious. I call Sufis, we say, beloved. There's no way I would survive that without the presence and the power and the grace and the, the love of the beloved. I know that. I, I I wouldn't get into an argument trying to convince anybody else. It's, that's not, not my thing. Mm. But I know that. I've known that, like I said, from a very young age. And that's what got me through Yes, you're right. You can't get through it in on your own. And again, the Sufi, the Sufi way is I don't need to define God. I don't need to define God. I just need to know. I need to know and listen. My inner ears. We all need to do that with our inner hearts. Listen, because there's there's always a moment when we get an invite, almost like a calling back to that beloved, to that source, to divinity. And um, and sometimes we miss it. Sometimes we're too far away from what I call the golden river, which takes us back there. We're too far away. That's okay. Don't stay too far for too long. Otherwise, we may become, we may convince ourselves that we don't have an ultimate soul home. Um, and we can convince ourselves of that. And the ego can take take control. And uh, we can live in a secular, uh, materialistic world and nothing else matters. Um which is, you know, doesn't really add much depth to to anyone's life. But um, so yeah, absolutely. And I, with the Sufis, the Sufi and the conversation we were having having together, it's okay. Like I said, to let your heart break. In fact, it's imperative that you find yourself doing that and cry, cry tears of remembrance. Just crying and allowing yourself to be that vulnerable is not just healing. We all hear these words, healing. and uh, It's not healing. It's, it's way beyond healing. It's the calling to remember where you come from and that no matter how hard it's been and how difficult, it's, it's, it's okay. Go back to that golden river and even dip your toes in it and there's tremendous, unbelievable uh, awakening that can happen. Um, and then and delight, all right? Because what do I say delight? I don't mean it in the light way, L-I-T-E. I mean true, deep, resonating delight. Because we only half live if we don't have that quality in our lives from time to time. I cannot think of anything more delightful than remembering that you can go back to the beloved and be embraced in that grace and that immense presence, honestly, it's, it's life-saving. 
Another thing I'd like to say to people is this. Right now in the world, I'm no one. I don't have the solution. What I'm saying is this. From the Sufi perspective, I would ask people to remember, you are born male, females, or what, or however, you are born to be lions and lionesses. You are not born to be crawling around. From my perspective, coming from my upbringing and what I've shared with you so far, picking ourselves up and getting ourselves off our knees was hard enough. Standing up for a long time was hard enough, metaphorically speaking. And now we're talking about uh, journeying back to the source. That's not easy. Sometimes, but it's definitely worth doing for all the experiences one has. But equipping ourselves and remembering our, remembering this, that we are lions and lionesses. And if you use your imagination, if you wake your imagination up, your true imagination knows no bounds, no boundaries. You can create that. You can find that inner strength from just visualizing the qualities of literally the living and breathing lions and lionesses on the planet that we share this planet with. Integrate those qualities in yourself. Your indomitable spirit, courage, grace under pressure, you know, um, move, even the movement, the lyrical movement of the big cat. You know, hold yourself right. Hold yourself upright. Not your chest sticking out in arrogance, not your chin sticking out in arrogance, but in assured knowingness that you are more than you ever imagine you are you know apart from being the most mysterious thing on in the whole cosmos the human being you are the most mysterious thing we are the most mysterious thing to ourselves apart from that step into that mystery but step into it as a lion and a lioness because you need to you can't go floundering around in these inner realms in these mystical realms everybody thinks it's but i have this idea that people think it's, it's it's all, um, it's a kind of like a, an easy thing to do. You know, we can romanticize about it. We can uh, make, you know, create um, falsities around it. It's not easy. And so don't, don't think that you don't need to be very, very resolute and strong at times. You need to be. You need to go through these escarpments and terrains and levels and you need the courage of a lion. That's it. End of. I would suggest that that beautiful philosophy was fed into, especially children that, that don't get looked after properly, that are neglected, um, that they have someone that reminds them, no matter how hard it gets, no matter that you feel abandoned, you inside, if you find that lion inside you, you can do and achieve and get through anything. Anything that life, any challenge that life throws up at you, do not go down on your knees. Get back up. Now, if you do find yourself on your knees and you're crying, not in the not in the valley of tears sense, but you're crying out of loss and pain, that's also okay. That's that's fine. Give yourself some time. This is where compassion comes in, isn't it? Personal compassion. Again, tenderness and care for yourself. These are developed. These qualities are encouraged. We learn how to use them. We learn how to invite them into us, into ourselves and become familiar with them. So they're ready a hand when we need them. No problem with that as well. This 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 thing called life is, uh, we don't have a blueprint for it. But like I said, rather than being a ship without a rudder, if you can just even again visualize the beloved behind it all, the essence, the source of all things, and basically love, and then take that on, step up like a lion or a lioness, you have a chance of enriching in your whole being, your whole life, your whole life experiences, you know? Mm. Beautiful experiences are there pretty much if we open our eyes in slightly different way, our hearts and our minds, beauty and the experience of beauty is on our doorstep 24 hours a day. It's just a matter of perspective. And then we go back to anxiety I'm not saying you conquer, you don't, you know, you don't fight anxiety. You go with it. There's nothing you can do with it. There's nothing, you can't fight it, but what you can learn to do. Where do you think it comes from, uh, <laughs> Kevin? What's the reason for anxiety? Put it on a spiritual plane because okay, nobody I, can work it out. 
Okay, I, I would say that we. I would say okay. I, I'll say like this, and we share from again a very a very, uh, but the Sufi Sufi perspective. There's the river of gold. We've got out of that river, and we and we all have got out of that river from time to time because it's called life. Now you get out of the river, and you go on soul journeys, you go into experiences, you go on journeys. We, like I said earlier, we travel and our soul thread if we're not careful becomes we travel and travel and travel and travel and travel and it becomes very very thin very like almost to the point where it's not connected it's not quite broken but it's so thin why wouldn't we feel tremendous anxiety it's the age of anxiety we've been living in it for the last well i think you know what human beings are born with it because it's it's, it's an actual function it's, an, it's, it's a function of survival but over and above that, we all know that, but over and above that, anxieties seems to me to be on the increase more, more, more. So the people I'm sharing these these things with and the what people coming to me with I want to share with me. Anxiety is the main ingredient. They're lost, they're confused, they're bereft, they don't know where they're going because it, like we we touched on it's disorientating. Um, but so if you can remind them that listen, at any time you can turn back for a moment. And, you know, the experiences, you can turn back and remember that gold, that river of gold, and you can start your journey back to it. There's no, because uh, I said, the further you get away from it, instinctively, you, I think human beings have it inbuilt in them. We're going too far. We're straying too far from the beloved, from uh, the boundless love. And we can't, we can't survive without that. That's like, uh, no, that's, that's our nectar. It's a gift from God, or the, I'd say the beloved, but um, that's what it is. So if we can remember to turn back round and go back to that river, and remember that our soul thread is always connected to the divine, no matter what we've done, no matter how we've hurt people, no matter if we've um, messed up our lives and other people's lives, relatively speaking, uh, no matter how how we feel about ourselves, how depressed we are. Again, um, confused. Just remind yourself that you can turn around and go back to that, that river of gold. And even just sitting by it and sitting on the banks and watching it flow. That's the river that, like I said, is going to fill you up. It's going to nourish, truly nourish you. And then begin to waking up into a uh, a sense of wonder because of it. Now, a sense of wonder as well. That's what does that mean? It means again, it's always on our doorstep. Wonderment. It's a quality of looking at the world um, as a Sufi. Wonderment. It's also very prevalent in Celtic mysticism. You awaken that in you. There's no end. It's endless. What you can um, garner a sense of wonder from, you know. From flowers to trees to rivers to grasses to birds to the whole from skies you know different different uh, temperaments the weather it's all there music love everything a sense of wonder you're gonna I think I think it's a beautiful um, enriching thing when we have a sense of wonder about the beloved as well it fills your heart up it expands your heart automatically um, with uh, there's so much richness. Um, you're half healed, um, if you remember, just by remembering that we can turn back. We always have the option to turn back from things we have created in our lives. All the experiences can turn back from them we can, and head on back to a vast uh, inner, inner, in, inner realm, um, inner di you know, I don't know, I kind of like almost like another dimension where we'll, we will be trans transformed just by remembering that we do have a home to go to uh, an eternal home you know and I just think that's priceless and beautiful beautiful absolutely beautiful and you took me on a journey Kevin really I don't know where it was but it was somewhere that reminded me again the simple truths about life and these are all, I think, innate to us. We do know this as children. And our life 
sometimes steers us in another direction through all the things that happen to us. But you talk about the Sufis, for example, and mm. they are a mystical bunch, let's put it that way. And what's wonderful about them is that they absolutely accept anybody into their um, communities and into their yeah. hearts. And yeah. this is what I love about them is that um, it doesn't matter where you're from, Mm -hmm. um, who you are, what's your background. The point is that they recognize that we are actually essentially all part of the beloved and we are all as one. Yeah. And I think that I'm no expert, but I think one of the biggest things that I see these days in life is that the separation feeling of separation leads to this anxiety and also the forgetfulness of ourselves, yeah. the forgetfulness of this incredible beauty and this incredible truth that actually, you know, people are going to say I'm a hopeless romantic. I am indeed, but I'm talking about something different here is that love really is all. And this divine love that saved your life yes. that was the guide for you was the rope to god in a way that yes. kept you on the path keeps you on the path um of whatever it is it's beautiful and i think unless we've had this suffering in our life unless we've been through this incredible, I suppose, awakening to ourselves. Because when you are put through these dreadful and horrific tests, there is no one to turn to, in essence. You no. either go under or you go up. I don't think there's a middle ground at this point. I think at that moment, there is a decision to be made. And I think that's where grace comes in. And when you felt grace, when you've been touched by grace, your life is never the same again. And I think what's important, you say that you spoke to your friend who was a Sufi and that you had this fantastic conversation. And I think there lies also another key is that friends of the heart are instantly recognizable. Mm -hmm. And I know somebody who's a friend of mine, and he's an older gentleman, and he's just become a grandfather. And it's something so beautiful that he said. And he said, oh, this is my grandson. And he said, this is the first time that I'm meeting him again, but in this world. Uh, and I thought, isn't that so wonderful? Yes. And yes. I then, I, I sort of, I had really tears in my eyes when he said that. And I thought, actually, that's every single one of us that you and I and everyone we have in our lives, everyone we meet, whether it that means it's the delivery person or whether that's um, our partners or family or children, whoever, we're here for a reason. We're here for a greater reason. And you instinctively know when someone has that boom, boom heart connection, it's there. You yeah. recognize them because the heart recognizes. And yeah. once the heart recognizes, everything else follows. So it's so important to have in our life those, yes, like-minded people of the mind, but it's even more important to have our heart people. Yes. Unless in these times, especially now, you are with those people that can lift you, that can support you, that actually play the same symphony as your heart, it's impossible to survive. It's a big challenge, big challenge, especially like you said, especially uh, at this particular 
time due to all, all the um, exterior pressures that are happening to everybody, seemingly worldwide. We're all like, so we're, we're going through a quickening in, in a spiritual sense. Some are not finding it easy. I am very now, uh, I, I recognize and I'm very, very lucky and fortunate to have already had a bedding and a grounding in uh, um, how to, how to uh, enter into these different realms and to sometimes, and to negotiate these terrains. Um, this is the payback. I'm very honored and, and I'm humbled by it. And and I agree with you. Um, you meet people that are just your immediately your 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 spiritual sister and spiritual spiritual brothers, um, and um, that again is um, priceless. Again, is designed, as far as I'm concerned, by the beloved. It's meant to happen, and um, then we can find a refuge for a moment uh, within that relationship. You know, they the relationships we we are. We encourage and um, we learn and reinforce uh, elemental truth. Elemental truth, and um, this is priceless. It's, it's, it's a gift of again spiritual gifts. Um, and I've mentioned this before, actually, in one of my other um, episodes, and I talk about this um, when I talk to people about families and the families we're born into and i've read many books about it and i've spoken to many a wise person far wiser than myself i have to say but um the i don't know what you think about this but that we actually choose who to come to and um you often think to yourself why the hell did I do that? You know, yeah, you what was I yeah. thinking? What contract did I bloody sign? Mm. You know, um, was I totally mad before I came to Earth? Um, but <clears throat> this book where this author called Betty J. Edie, and she wrote a book called Embraced by the Light and the Awakening Heart. And she said she had a near-death experience. And she was told that we actually choose every person in our life that's going to teach us a lesson mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't realize that the souls who've given us the biggest tests the biggest hurt are actually the ones who are on a very high spiritual plane in the spiritual world but have sacrificed something in order to help us to oh, learn yeah. What it's do you really, think about that? I, I think that's fascinating. I think that also comes through experience, and I think I, I think it's a great perspective to take. So we're to, in, in Sufism, it's called alchemy. So you mm -hmm. take the base metal and you transform it into gold. And when yeah. you can do that with uh, all things, then life changes. And if we can remember that we have that capability, I, I totally agree with you, and I do think that. And um, Strangely and oddly enough, now I've come to see, uh, yeah, my own mother in particular and my father. Maybe, like you said, maybe they took the big hits. Their children didn't have to take the big hits. It did take some, but they took more. And it's, um, so yeah, if you, and so it turns, turns your inner realm and your inner beings, you, you take that and say, oh my God. And now it turns into gold and it's like a gift. Oh my God! The yeah, this, is, this me, is one of those moments where it's, it's you actually turn everything on its head. Absolutely, and if you have those de the dexterous skills to do that mentally, spiritually, mm. this 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 is why this is why we said so from the beginning of this uh, podcast to now, where it's all been, it all threads together and weaves together, and it's amazing. And you see the nuance, you understand uh, so much more subtleties of of, of um, the events that have happened to you twists and turns on the road and then you bring a you bring a more joyful heart to your life experiences this then like i said it transforms everything transforms everything the way you look at everything the way you listen to everything the way you experience everything this is where the inner richness is 
and we can go into the world like i said we leave that with her we can believe that you know tranquility peace enlightenment all of it's outside the river it isn't but we have to learn those lessons it's okay and like i said if if that thread of thought that's connected permanently to the divine is stretched so thin the divine never gives up on you though you can stretch it as thin as you want you can take it from light years away you can keep stretching it but you know what's so beautiful the moment when you just when the moment when you realize you're pulling out that soul thread and you are trying to break it when you realize that you can't and actually you don't really want to you are just always just uh, uh, it's like a child you know testing its boundaries and then you remember and especially for people that have been in like very, very, very stressful, dark situations for long periods of time. It's yeah. like that remembrance again, it's big in Sufism, uh, the quality of it. It's again, this is the beginning of the total alchemy of your alchemy of your being. You're fed up of sitting in the dark. You're fed up of not seeing and bringing joy into your own heart and flower in your own garden. It's too long to be away from that. All the flowers are dead. There's no life. There's no music. There's no bird song. There's no divine beauty. There's no divine beauty. It's called the virtue of God, greenness of God. You remember, and that little journey goes back, even if you're crippled because of the life experiences you've had and you've taught, you've given yourself, take, respons take responsibility first, and then go home. And even if you're calling to begin with, you'll, you'll eventually, like I said, you'll get back up because the closer you get to that divine source, the more you're going to have, you're going to feel with strength and, uh, and life force. It will come back to you. And you know, on that journey back, that's when you'll notice the geometry of God. You'll see the face of God in flowers. You'll see the face of God in the design of the cosmos and everything in between. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm being sincere. That's all what happened. You hear the music of God. You're allowed to dance. You're allowed to. You're allowed to rejoice. You're allowed to sing. Oh my God, I remembered. It's just you don't need to. If it's for you, you know that personal journey. You don't need to tell anybody else. Your heart's your heart's opening. That's your journey. Of tears back to divine beauty and joy. There's nothing that can compare. To it. It's. it's I can't think of anything in life right now that I have in my life that I would swap for that. I make a promise to myself, I will never stray too far from the Golden River again. I will never do it. I've done it. I went looking. I made I made some good choices. I made some indifferent choices. I made some bad choices. But I will never leave that. Too, I don't want to go too far from the river. In fact, I want to dive into it now. So for all my life, that's why I've learned that journey Take me, take me back home. And that's what it is. Does that make and sense? We're all, yeah, because we're all walking each other home to our own reality. Yeah. And what you speak about is so profound, Kevin, because you speak about the secrets of life. And it's time for people to actually find their secret. What is their secret? And it's the secrets, in fact, behind the secrets. But people are so distracted with all sorts of nonsense now. And we all get distracted with nonsense. But when we have somebody like you who talks to us and reminds us of actually there is so much more. There is so much more to find out. There is so much more to life. And people always say, I want to be happy. And happiness is absolutely not a destination. I'm convinced of that. It's There are moments of happiness. But as human beings, there's no state of perpetual happiness. Peace, I think, is something that is something that we can aspire to to have that serenity. And that doesn't come from anything outside of us. It's something that comes from deep within us. 
in that resonance, in that music that you speak of, in the divine geometry where our souls align with the divine. Yeah. And that is perfection because then you realize that every single thing in our life on this planet, on the other planets, in the other worlds that exist, are actually exactly where they need to be because there is a perfection in everything where we are placed. Everything yes. needs to be exactly where it is now. There is no um, mistake in the divine creation. So when you speak about these things, I'm overjoyed to listen. And I'm sure people out there are because it's this remembrance. It's this, ah, oh yes, this remembering. And even if we can remember a glimmer, you know, even yeah. if it's sort of a match, you only need a little bit of a spark to light that candle. It, it just takes a flicker. And there you have it. The light is on. The light, so, the light. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, good, sorry. Yeah. The light is on and you can't force people to do anything they don't want to do. But what you're actually doing with your work is you're lighting that candle to help them find their own way. It's, it's definitely that. And that's where um, self-responsibility comes into it. So that's, that appeals to me. It appeals to me from my training as well. I don't mind that. Discipline is freedom. We've t we touched on that in the last podcast. Uh, you have to know it for yourself. There's no point in listening to somebody else talk and then uh, think that they have or can do that for you. They can't take you into those realms. You have to do it yourself. But we, as human beings, as human souls, we can share, like you said, sisters, sisterhood and brotherhood, especially in the Sufi realms, we can share that. And, um, and maybe ignite something in that human being, in that soul that yeah. comes from the same source. So why wouldn't they remember it? Why wouldn't they have recollections? Like you said, it could have been millennia they've been away from home. It doesn't make no difference. There is always something deep, deep, deep within us that we'll remember. And like you said, it could be uh, a word. It could be a passage of a poem. It could be a person. It could be uh, an event of, in nature. It could be anything that just sparks up that fire of remembrance and then transforms your life in every way possible. Um, that, again, you know, uh, no, again, there are always, like you said, there's no such thing as, um, unless you're, when you're away from the beloved, there's no such thing as that kind of like const, constant um, permanence. Everything is, we know this, everything is changing, except change itself. We know that. Yes. So, yeah, you know, it's a prerequisite yeah, yeah. Of, of existing in this realm. Sufis so talk about other realms, um, and we see now, I think I mentioned it to you, everywhere on TikTok and everywhere now, people are talking about different realms. This is a new vernacular, it's just, a, you know, pretty much just arrived. The Sufis have known about different realms, you know, for a long, long, long time. Um, but we are a universe. Every single one of us is a universe, and not just one universe. We are so many different universes. Mm -hmm. If you think about the most simplistic thing, um, if you think about me or I think about you, and then the phone rings, yeah, we're talking of the most basic connection there. Yeah, but absolutely. what about heart to heart? What about if my heart talks to your heart, talks to the hearts out there? Yeah. Because if you speak from the heart, it's a language that everybody understands. Everybody understands it. Everybody it understands the language of, yes. of the heart because everyone has a heart. So we're going to understand the language of the heart. We are going um, to. Yeah. It's it's normal, but I want to ask you a little bit, um, because I know you do so many different things in your work, um, Kevin, and you are helping people 
through your own experiences um, and what you've been through, that was really the catalyst for you now to guide other people to find their own path. Mm. And I want to ask you, the Sufis, Mm. tell me about your experience with them. I feel like they've always... um... For I people out works. there who don't know about them, okay. um, just your your personal experience of what you've um, uh, had in your life. Okay. With them. In a brief, yeah, in a brief synopsis, um, I I feel um, I don't feel like I was like I touched upon earlier about the events of my early childhood. Um, I always felt an, uh, a kindred spirit um, and a connection to something that was giving me the strength to get through what I was going through, especially as a young child. It was always there. Um, and without getting too mm, mystical about it, I was having experiences and um, which people would consider as otherworldly. And um, this, when I first came across the teachings and uh, the knowledge of the Sufis, resonated with me completely. Uh, beings on other levels on dimensions existing i will okay okay that's interesting and uh alchemy like i said um recognition of the power and the true uh healing properties of being present in this world and also considering the other realms the seven realms um everything i heard about it all the prayers uh the devotion the, uh, again, the the movement, the dance, the music was just, I felt at home with it immediately. I well, it wasn't like I was learning about it. It was like, oh, of course, there it is again. It didn't take me long to find it um, as I was growing up, not really. Um, I'd read about, you know, I came across literature on it, along with yoga and Western psychology, philosophy of all different types and kinds. I read extensively right across the board. Um, because I was just interested, but Sufism just resonated about it. Just resonated with me. Uh, it, again, like we were talking about earlier, it just lit a little flame. I didn't go into it deeply to begin with, but it was just put to the side. I recognized it, and I studied yoga. I studied Tibetan Buddhism. I studied Indian yoga. I studied many, many things. Qualified in, as you, as you mentioned, uh, to become a yoga teacher. I was just interested in the subject. Um, learn about other gods and goddesses. And, um, you know, was amazed and immersed in it for years and years and years. But nothing resonated quite with my heart in the way that Sufism did. I, I, can't, ex- I can't explain that in everyday terms. It just is the way it is. So for me now, well, again, what I would like to say to people that are really struggling for whatever reason, get back to that, so get back to the river and go and sit by the river. God, don't stray too far from it right now. And that, that's that's from genuinely from my heart. There is so much, uh, um, so much healing there. Um, so much, so much that makes sense once you do decide and take that journey yourself. Get up and go back to the the, the, the river of gold. Don't don't stray too far from it. And everything then will be revealed to you. We are living in very very poignant times, spiritually speaking. Um, I think most people know it because we know, we talk to touch on that well, we always intrinsically know we have an inner wisdom, we have a synchronicity, you know, we're, we're experiencing this. And um, like I said earlier as well, we're, we're experiencing, a lot of people experience a quickening, they don't quite know how to orientate themselves with that. Um, but that's what this is. This is an awakening. And um, yeah, so... Where is the compass point? Where is the axis? You know, everything is spinning around. The world seems to be going mad, but Mm. actually it's not. It's a accumulation of events that there has to be a change in the world. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows, Mm. as you said, there is something far greater on um, many levels that's occurring now. And actually, it's a reflection 
of what is going on inside of us. It's one thing to go out there and to talk to people, um, I don't know, in whatever form, or to actually not agree with other people mm. and to make that voice heard. But ultimately, unless we change our condition, ourselves, and unless we change ourselves to be who we really are, I don't think there's going to be peace in the world. That's just my opinion, um, because it all begins with us. We are actually the representatives of God on earth. Yeah. So if, and, but we are not angels. We're not, um, you know, we're not complete, we, you know, there's the earthly side of us, which is the egotistical side of us. And then there's the spiritual heavenly side of us, which is the soul. And we have to have an ego in order to live on the earth because we're made um, of the earth. So mm -hmm. you can go out there and we can, you know, not agree with this and not agree with that. Um, but actually, think about the possibility of if we actually change our inner self and focus completely on the worlds that you're talking about and take your advice, then we become that beacon of light for everyone who has contact with us, surely. Yeah, I think we're there. I think we're at desperate frontiers right now in many ways. And um, for some, for a lot of people all across the world, regardless of um, circumstances, uh, it's a very, very challenging time. Therefore, I would say that apt now, because these, 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 what we talk about in, again, referring to Sufism, when we talk about um, beauty, for instance, divine beauty, it, says, it seems like, yeah, but I know, but what's that going to make a difference? How's that going to make a difference in my life? It will make a profound difference in your life because it will bring joy into your life. It will remove elements of sorrow from your life. It will enrich your life in ways that are unimaginable because you have taken it upon yourself to look and to experience life in a different way. If we stay, again, in the confines of sorrow and, again, of bleakness and heaviness, well, how can the world be any different for us? Right? So, like you said, it's how we perceive things. Now, when we have that backing and the symphony of God behind us, the beloved, now we imagine seeing the world through the eyes of the beloved that what what it truly as what he what that energy aspires to is creation is, the, is um, the incomprehensible beauty, divine beauty that we have all around us. It's a gift he gives us, so we need to open up our heart minds. Because we are in those bleakest of times, like I said, and this is our challenge. But wow, we can do it. Now that's not chasing so much wealth anymore. We all need to work, we all need to be responsible and look after ourselves and our families. Of course we do. But what I mean is over and above that, maybe perhaps these difficult times will finally have people realizing we need to turn back within to come back out and like I said, alchemize ourselves so we can then Lend that to the to the world. It's not again shouting people down. It's not getting them to believe a certain way, or uh, you know, uh, believe in particular lit literature, or liturgies, or holy books. No, it's way beyond that. Sufism is way beyond that. Time that we took uh, some responsibility and then enjoy that sense of responsibility in its truest sense. And I can't think of anything better. I can't think of anything more healing right now in this world. Can't think of anything more that will enrich our lives and help people remove them, you know, get themselves out of, like I said, depression states and many other um, challenging states that we're finding ourselves in. Um, yeah. Um, so don't I be love afraid. It. I love it. I love it. And it's uh, so wonderful what you're saying. I feel like I'm in one of those hot air balloons in Cappadocia in Turkey. Good, good. Because you're in the <laughs> land of the holy men. And yeah, yeah. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, one last thing beautiful. I, if I could just touch on this one last thing, the uh, of course, so in, in in the seven valleys of Sufism, is if every if, if anybody is interested, to just have a peek and have a look and what that actually means. The seven valleys, the last one, I think, um, is interesting because it's the valley of true poverty and absolute nothingness. You know, we've all matured in this world, we've all kind of like come across Zen literature, and on well, not all of us, a lot of people, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, for the last 30, 40 years or so, accessible books on Zen Buddhism, Buddhism itself, and, and the idea uh, of nothingness, shanyata in Zen Buddhism. Um, I'll just like to touch on that briefly. From a Sufi perspective, it's very similar, but true poverty, we have absolutely been made to be, you know, by, uh, by the politics of the world, uh, the, the mentality of the politics, we have to be um, absolutely petrified of scarcity, we have to be petrified that we will find ourselves in poverty. Well, so what? Uh, do you compare? Could we compare without being unreasonable? Like I've just touched on, we all have to make a living and take responsibility. But beyond, over and above that, nothing again would compare to the the filling up you would receive from having going back to the river of gold, and then eventually getting in the river of gold and going back to your source. What can compare to that? So true poverty, you experience true poverty means that you absolutely abandon yourself. You lose yourself. That's what that means. It doesn't mean physically, but inside. You drop every preconceived ideas you have of yourself, all your identities, everything. You drop it all because that's a barrier between you and your divine, your divine beloved and that magic inside yourself. Right? So when we drop it all, that's what that means, true poverty. Let it go. Be courageous. You need to be courageous. Be, again, take the essence of what it means to be a lion, and that's what it means. Then lose yourself and keep losing yourself. Lose yourself to life. Lose yourself to music. Be uh, brave enough to lose yourself in love. You know? Uh and nothingness. What does nothingness mean? Nothingness means everything. It all comes from nothing. You know, the zero one uh, principle all comes from nothing. All potential, all creativity. Love itself is its movement, is its energy, is its essence. And we can remember that. Wow, nothing can, well, any, anything can happen. Fortitudes and vagaries of life happen, ups and downs. Okay, fine. That's what we can do. We can look at it, step back from it, go, yeah, okay. Positive, neutral, negative. Okay, I can take it all. Don't have to uh, be too affected by any of it because I'm close to the river. In fact, I'm, I'm back in the river now and I'm swimming. I'm going home, you know, and I'm embracing it all. I'm embracing everything. Because nothing really affects me. Because I, I know what true poverty is. It means breaking my heart over and over and over. It means crying the tears of joy, tears of awakening. They're not tears of sorrow. They're tears of going back into love, enfolding in that. You know, so that again, uh, the, the last value, I think, I think it's really poignant in this time. So don't be afraid of that poverty or nothingness. When you see it from the Sufi perspective, it's everything because you've released everything, it all comes back to you, but tenfold, in an inexplicable ways, you know, which is every single element of your life. If there's anybody that's lost at the moment, struggling, um, that's all I can say to them. I've been there, you may visit those places again, but armed with what we've been talking about for the last hour or so, being fortunate enough to share this conversation, but armed with these things of like, uh, Contentment, unity, and knowledge, and love, um, and wonderment, and again, uh, true poverty and absolute nothingness. You are reborn, quite literally reborn, in its truest sense. And that's all I can say, really. I just hope that's inspired. I hope it helps people. It just does help me. Always remember that. That's all I say again. Right now, don't stay too far from that river of gold. All of you that have that listen to come across this, stay close to God. Stay close to the beloved for now. That's all I'd say. Just stay in that protection, you know, and all else will be revealed to you. I, I, I'm convinced.
it will happen. There'll be a fortuitous synchronization will happen in your life. You will start to wake up and notice these these things. You, you, you'll switch on to it. And there's miracles all over the place. And there's magic, but true magic um, occurring. And, we, and that will happen again in this world. It will come back. I'm convinced of it. Um, if enough of us do that, let's just all go home for a while. You know what I mean? And sit in those, uh, in the gold, radiant light of healing and just recover a little bit. And we get back up and we, and we, and we, and we, we like, we carry on as lions and lionesses, you know, but equipped with wisdom, compassion, the idea of seeing divine beauty everywhere. You can't harm anything then. You don't have no inclination to harm anybody or anything. If you see the world as divine, from the minute, tiny little insect to the, the greatest whale in the ocean and beyond into the cosmos, why would you want to hurt it? If it's from the mind of God, please don't hurt it. Try your best not to hurt any living thing. We all make mistakes. We all have to survive on this planet. We have to get on with it. And we do. Um, we do bring about suffering to ourselves and others and to all living things. Of course we do. But we maybe we could then, this new perspective and the new experience, this expansion inside ourselves, this reawakening, maybe we could consider every day what is divine. And if you look, like I said, well, look into nature. All you see is divinity. When you see a bird of prey flying in the sky, if you can, take a moment out and consider that bird of prey and its dexterity and its flight ability and the things it's capable of and the world it sees from its perspective. It's a, it's a portion of God. It's not just a bird. All living things. And then your relationship with all living things changes. You don't have to force it. It just happens because that's being close to the the beloved. That's what will happen to you. Does that make sense? Yes. And it makes sense on a completely different level mm. that um, it would be so lovely, actually, to have a series um, that you could um, do for people. I, I would definitely listen and that we can listen to you. You know, like you talk about the Seven Valleys and all the wisdom behind all of that it would be so nice to have something that you could do that we could listen to on spotify or wherever on youtube uh because it's so deep and so infinite that people need this kevin to be able to remind themselves of what you've said it's something that you should really think about doing. Yeah. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's something that is so wonderful. It's so relaxing, but also informative on the earthly plane. But also it resonates because it's actually somewhere it's reminding, you know, it's a remembrance, as you said, it's a reminder. Yeah. And I think this is really something that um, you should look into. I, I think a lot of people would find a lot of benefit in that. Yeah. Um, I, Thank I, you. I, 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 Thank I will try, yeah, I will try, I will look into that and um, yeah. you know, um, maybe try and, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll get something going, reach yeah. out to people and hopefully it will help people yeah and and yeah just share have that build up that relationship and see, see beautiful where absolutely beautiful i am really so grateful for you to come on today and to share your time and a part of your essence with us because it's really something that i will be thinking about it certainly helped me to remember so many things and I'm sure after we finish this conversation for people out there also it it's something that you can't put into words um, no, it's, yeah that's it you and I shared this and you and I also know the limitations of words mm -hmm. vocabulary yeah and it's beyond that and and again so you're invited to enter into the infinite 
in your heart yes. and your mind when you enter into these uh, valleys of Sufism or any other road that you're on that appeals to you, that does that for you, that inspires you to do that. But can I just quickly just finish, break a week of week? Do we have time? Yes, yeah, go we have ahead. About a minute. Do we have a minute left? Yeah, go ahead. One, go one, ahead. Of, one of my inspirations for has been for a long, long time was um, Omar Khayyam. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go into his life story. If anybody's interested, um, find out about this genius, this, this um, mathematician, um, this beautiful philosopher, poet, extraordinary man. Um, but at, at the end of his life, he wrote a quatrain, and he was, um, when you read his, um, the, the poetry, um, you would, would not, you would think from um, the literature and what he says that he had no time for Sufism. But he was always a Sufi. He was a super, super advanced Sufi. So one of his last ever writings reveals that. Um, and it's so beautiful. And it's very apt for us now. I think it's relevant for us now. So I'd like, could I read it? Of course. Okay. So this is Omar Khayyam. Um, famous author of the um, Rubaiyat, and this is one of his um, portraits, and it reads, Until, when the hour of his homeward flight draws near, it is time for it to return to its ampler sphere. It cowers with joy, for the veil is raised, and it spies such things as eyes cannot be witnessed by waking eyes, such as things as cannot be witnessed by waking eyes. I made a mistake. But, that what he's saying there is for all his life, for all his um, experiences, for all his studying, for all his points of view throughout his whole life. And this man was rich in knowledge. That's what he finally uh, left for his students and for the world to, to read for eternity. He always knew such things as eyes cannot be witnessed by waking eyes. So the veil was lifted. The Sufis talk about the veils. He knew all along that there was a beloved, that there's no reason or sense to all the stars and the cosmology, the planets, and how they all unify and work together without there being a creator, a designer, an architect. But he just hid it from people and tested them. And um, yeah, what a beautiful thing. Beautiful. It's well worth um, reading that. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Again, just Omar Khayyam's Rubaiyat is so enriching. And that'll enrich your mind and extend you a bit. And also find out about how extraordinary that man was. Mm -hmm. What he contributed to, to science and to philosophy and to literature. Yeah. He was also degree. into astronomy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So many things that... Um, these wonderful um, examples of, you know, not just a poet, um, but so many other things and that he actually delved in, which is actually, it all goes hand in hand, the cosmos, the universes, which is all part of who we are, as we are, you know, as they all say, we have t stardust in our veins, and it's absolutely the truth. And yeah. anytime I'm feeling down, I remember, you have stardust in your veins. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. But Kevin, what can I say? I am not even going to try to say anything um, after all of that, because it wouldn't do it justice. So I'm going to leave it in the hearts of the people who are listening. And I hope that everybody who is listening out there is touched by what we have shared. And I'm so grateful really for you, Kevin, for the listeners out there, because when you share such a moment in the cosmos, as you said, it has to have an effect. It has to have something beautiful, a light upon our lives. And we might not realize straight away, but for sure one day we will know that this moment we shared 
and there was a far greater reason for it. So I thank you again for coming. Thank you very much for having me and for um, giving me the time. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And for people, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, for the people out there, um, Kevin, where can they get hold of you? Where can they find out more about you? Uh, you can you can contact uh, people can contact me and find out more about um, what I do and um, what I teach and uh, and other and other things on um, Kevin dot Silas sixty four at gmail dot com. Okay, and your website Peaceful Path Yoga dot co dot uk okay so um yes um if anybody is interested in um, in wanting to kind of contact me and uh they may like i said they so may they, and, they um, because you do all sorts of things and um they can find out on your website anyway the sort of work that you do yeah and and also it's changed you know um you know, what we offer to people is um, yeah a whole uh, fundamental okay Excellent, Body, excellent, yeah, excellent. I'm yeah. going to now jump on the magic carpet that you have put in front of all of us and um, see where the journey takes us. Well, enjoy your journey. Be wide <laughs> eyed too. on your journey. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all meet each other somewhere along the starlit sky. I'm yeah, sure. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. 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 Kevin Silas, incredible really, how much wisdom so many people have out there and I am so grateful that my guests are willing to share these precious stories and of course I am especially grateful to all of you for listening. It's such an honour really to have such a wonderful, wonderful array of listeners Thank you so much. Now, go and do something wonderful for yourselves. Life is for living. Look after yourselves. Until next time, lots of love. Secrets for an Inspirational Life, brought to you by your host, Mimi Novik. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and see you in the next episode. For more information about Mimi Novik and her books, music and inspirational work, take a look at her website www.miminovik.co.uk